But some of my classmates used to call me Fatty Legs. They called me that because a wicked nun forced me to wear a pair of red stockings that made my legs look enormous. Christy Jordan Fenton is not indigenous, but her children are, through their father. Their grandmother, Margaret Olemon Pokiak Fenton, was a residential school survivor. I'm going to let you in on a secret that I have kept for more than 60 years. An experience the two women wrote about in several books for kids. She always wanted to show that children can go through really, really horrific things and that they could come out. Since Pokiak Fenton's death last year, her daughter-in-law has carried on that mission, doing public readings from their book and talking to kids about residential schools. We would never get into the really horrific details because we found children didn't need that. If we told a child that Margaret went home and she can no longer speak in Inavaluktan, which meant she can no longer speak to her mother because her mother didn't speak English, that was enough. Children are like, that's horrible. Their message, not always as well understood by adults. Well, I remember in grade seven, my teacher was talking about it and she tried to kind of justify residential schools. High school student Isaiah Shafkat believes even now, the young have an easier time talking about the legacy of residential schools than adults. I think it's because youth are a lot more open-minded and willing to learn. He advises Canada's largest school board on how to work in Indigenous perspectives into the curriculum. Because Indigenous education is a new topic, uh, those who are educators may not be aware of the issues uh, that Indigenous people face. And to educate adults, Shafkat helped develop a marketing campaign where video screens in elevators allow people watching ads to read about the indigenous land they're standing on, reminding people it's never too late to learn, reflect and reconcile. Deanna Sumanak-Johnson, CBC News, Toronto.